<laughs> okay, I'm Tomasz Wengel. Uh, I'm from Collabora Productivity, and I'm, I'll be talking about uh, what I did uh, last couple of uh, months, years. Uh, and about LibreOffice 5 and what I think that the new directions are in LibreOffice. So first I'll talk about uh, the OpenGL backend. So what we did is uh, we have many backends for every uh, platform, each backend, uh, graphic backend to draw things. Uh, but what we wanted to do is uh, to just use OpenGL as one uh, backend and only. Of course, this is still far away and maybe never, never really uh, be finished. Uh, but at least we we'll try this. So uh, why we use uh, OpenGL? OpenGL uh, because. Uh, Almost every laptop, every computer now has a GPU, which is very powerful. So we should use them and uh, uh, as much as possible for tasks that they are meant to. So we want to render everything in OpenGL. This means also all the controls on the UI, or, and of course the canvas and uh, uh, the, the the slides uh, and things like that, uh, and because it's uh, cross-platform in theory. Of course, there are problems. Uh, we encountered many of them. For example, uh, different GPU drivers have behaved differently and have bugs. Uh, we, we had to eventually fix uh, or just uh, blacklist the drivers. So. Uh, we couldn't use OpenGL on uh, on these drivers, uh, and this was really a problem. Uh, so uh, the next uh, problem is that the current API of the how, how in LibreOffice we draw things is not really good for uh, not really designed for how. Uh, GPU uh, is using drawing and uh, not optimized for drawing. You can generally you can draw draw things, but you cannot draw them fast enough because you have to do a lot of switches and uh, texture uploads uh, that are unnecessarily just because the the, the API is not uh, not. Uh, not really meant, uh, not really optimized for drawing on the GPU. So the not another thing is also 2D. It's not 3D. In 2D, you have uh, it's things like anti-aliased lines, and most most of the things uh, anti-aliased. Sometimes, but sometimes also not. Uh, for example, uh, OpenGL allows you to do uh, anti-aliasing, but if you choose this, then you have to uh, anti-alias everything. And this is not, uh, first, this is a performance problem. The second is you don't want to do it always. Uh, and then there are like uh, primitives, like Bezier curves. Uh, the curves you have to do uh, on the CPU. Uh, ideally, this. Uh, we would do this on the GPU to accelerate this. So uh, then are also problems like complex polygon rendering and tessellation of polygons, uh, which is if, you, if the polygon itself is not con convex, it's not, just doesn't not have holes or anything, uh, it's not a problem to uh, render it. But when you have a more complex polygons, you then and the, the problem starts, uh, and uh, you have to do it differently on the GPU. Uh, really complex is uh, a really problem is the font rendering itself. Uh, we are the office suite, so 
font rendering is extremely important. So you have to hinting and a lot of th things like uh, that are really uh, important. But on the GPU, something like this is uh, really hard or it's not not really existence. There are a uh, library like uh, Gliffy from Google. We try to use it, but it's still far away to have uh, some good results with it, or fast at the same time. <laughs> uh, so what you usually do for fonts or, or for text rendering is uh, you render text uh, into uh, texture atlases and then draw actually from the texture to the to the uh, document uh, itself uh, which is okay but uh, performant but there are problems with things like uh, kerneling and stuff like it. this is then you have really uh, big problems uh, like this I know we've been doing this for years and we have zero kerning problems Oh, really? We just use HuffBuzz to do all the layout, do all the kerning, and we just choose textures from the atlas where the glyphs already rendered the font glyphs, and they kern correctly. Oh, um, cool. It's not hard, but the CPU side has to do it. Which yes. We, huh? Which we... Oh, sorry, Enlightenment EFL. We've been using the GPU for rendering for, like, many, many, many years. Oh, we, nice. we, you can even do Bezier curves on the GPU in a fragment shader, use a quadratic, and if you do t tessellation on the CPU and just turn it into one triangle spanning one set, you can actually use a quadratic. But it is patented. It's NVIDIA, I think, has patents on that. Go check it out. There's a paper on it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, okay, this, yeah. this, uh, I think it's, it's Microsoft has patent on it. Oh, no, 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 sorry, yeah, it was Microsoft, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But NVIDIA implemented so, NVIDIA. So like generally, you, you could also do uh, in the geometry shader, same thing, I think. Yeah. So what we're doing, we've actually also been adding vector stuff now, and what we do is we have one thing where we generate spans on the CPU, and then we just stuff spans into the GPU, like in a texture, and we have a fragment shader decode the spans oh. um, on the fly. Yeah, we will, uh, let's talk later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, all of these are actually solvable. Yeah, so sure. these, are all, yes, these are all solvable things, yeah, yeah. but uh, you have to, uh, it's a pain, yeah, because yeah, I mean, you cannot just, you, you have this to... Is, this is more your question, your comment about the current structure is not optimized. To be done this way, you're having to go through a restructure code, right? Yeah, also, yes, but currently we don't, uh, we just want, first First uh, is that we just want it to work exactly, correctly. Then we'll try to optimize and go from there. Carry on. Yeah, and... Uh, the last problem is, is, is uh, the transfer between, between CPU and GPU. You have to be very careful. Uh, any transfer costs time and memory, and so you have to optimize it as to the minimum. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is uh, LibreOffice Kit. So what? Actually, this is this is an interface for LibreOffice, a simple C and API and C++ that you can uh, interface with uh, LibreOffice. Uh, there is stable uh, API that is just generally used for uh, document conversion currently, uh, and but we are also having unstable uh, API that is just for which also supports the rendering of text uh, and you know commands. This is like you know commands uh, and actions like bold and italic. You can s you can send this command and and the current cursor will be changed to bold. Uh, uh, and of course the callbacks. Uh, so if you go with cursor and in the ink where is bold, then you have to. Uh, Say back to the to the uh, uh, via via callback uh, that some stage uh, st stage has changed uh, so that now the 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 current uh, text under is is in bold. Uh, so this is then used by LibreOffice for Android. I was last year talking here about. Uh, 
on this conference about uh, LibreOffice for Android, how we added uh, editing. So uh, this is just a little bit repeat. Uh, so we use LibreOffice Kit and uh, JNI, the Java native interface. And we then took uh, Firefox for Android and just re uh, reshape it so that uh, we can uh, use it for document uh, rendering. Uh, gestures and tile rendering uh, is used by uh, we use it, we use by uh, Firefox for Android. So what ha we have implemented is uh, then document view viewing. This was. Uh, a company, Smooth, uh, funded us to do these initial steps. And then we built on top of that and added also basic editing. So basic editing of text, and you can change pictures, ro rotates, and like this, all to the GUI. And uh, this was funded by the Document Foundation. Um, later, we also added uh, some toolbar uh, in the in the application uh, so you can change very basic editing functions like bold, italic, which font and stuff like this. Uh, generally this current state is somewhere there. It's still not good. Uh, we had big problems with uh, size uh, of the APK because we were limited to, uh, I mean, Google has limited uh, uh, to 50 megabytes, and this was now extended to 100. So this was a really big uh, relief for us. So we can just add more and more features. We don't have to, to uh, take them away, actually. <laughs> so the next thing we also then did based on this is uh, LibreOffice Online. LibreOffice Online, this is just a cloud version of LibreOffice that has very similar principles like in uh, LibreOffice for Android. We, we generate the document, uh, the tiles of the document uh, via LibreOffice Kit and send them to the, to the client. Uh, in this case, this is the client has uh, Allo leaflet. Uh, I'll talk a little bit later. Uh, and for the communication, it uses a WebSocket. Uh, so uh, the server, special server, uh, communicates with the client uh, via WebSocket because we need asynchronous messages, uh, sending of messages, and this is not possible with just uh, REST API or normal REST API. <laughs> and, the, and the communication must be full duplex also. So on the client, client we build the client uh, by, with uh, leaflet uh, JS library. Uh, this is library that's generally generally used for in OpenStreetMap for displaying uh, the maps. So we just retrofitted it and changed it so that it, instead of maps, it just uh, shows the document. Mm. The tiles are generated on the server and cached. And then they are transformed or compressed to a PNG files and then sent to the client, uh, where are then, then shown like the document. So then we created the uh, SVG overlay uh, for the selections. So if you select uh, things, uh, an SVG overlay will show the selections and also cursors and, uh, and some handles. And then uh, also here we added a toolbar to where you can manipulate the state of the document. Uh, 
And of course, if there is state change because of the WebSocket uh, API, you can get this back and change the on the toolbar uh, the state. So I have a question. Is sure. all of this only for documents? Or does it also cover PowerPoints and well the, the presentations and the Yes, uh, of course. All, all yeah. Them? Okay. Uh, so you can interface with the document uh, managing system. Uh, we built this for a company called uh, Icewarp that funded the actually the almost uh, whole uh, everything. Uh, and because they are a company for uh, document management, we interface with them. We also uh, added integration with OnCloud. Um, and now we are working on collaborative editing, so it will be possible to do collaborative editing soon. So we also uh, created this code. This is Collabora Online uh, development environment. Collabora Online is uh, our enterprise edition of the LibreOffice Online. Uh, and for easier testing, uh, we uh, created a virtual machine uh, which has Collabora Online integrated with OnCloud. So you can just fire up the, the, the virtual machine and test it out. Uh, so I can show this. So this is on cloud. And we already have these some basic documents. Example documents, you can just test it out. For example, this. So this now start, starts up the uh, Collabora online and you can just edit the document. I hope there's no, it's, it's a little bit buggy, so I <laughs> hope it will work. When you change the document, you can also see uh, how the tiles are re-rendered sometimes. Because when you change everything, you have to change all the tiles beyond, uh, uh, that are beyond this. So this works, and you can zoom it here. And when you zoom it, uh, the document changes, and toys have to be refetched, and they're also cached. So it works fairly quickly uh, the second time. In the first time, you can see a little bit redrawing. Second time, it's uh, already you cannot almost not see anything. You can change the fonts, selections. We have these handles. So these are just copied from uh, LibreOffice or Android. We can also change it. The image. You can resize it, no problem. And now this is now the toolbar. Changes to center horizontally, add bullets. No. Yes. Can you do things like code editing and um, like real-time chat? Real-time? Real-time chat or messaging. Uh, you mean like collaborative editing? Like yeah, yes, this is still in works. Uh, uh, we have some prototypes, but uh, not yet some working. This currently, this is not working here, but it will be working. We have, uh, we are working on this. 
so this is mainly what I wanted to show you today.